Right. Okay. So we were looking at um, revelation, or how the Holy Spirit reveals, how the Holy Spirit, um, you know, brings his understanding. Um, you know, if you look at a um, uh, very interesting verse, First Corinthians chapter two, one Corinthians chapter two, and verses um, nine and ten, right? Okay, one Corinthians two, verse nine. Okay, if you if you see, it says, as as it is written. I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him okay look at verse 10 but God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of God okay so and, and then goes on to say how the spirit of God the Holy Spirit is a spirit of revelation who reveals who brings things that we do not yet know to our understanding right so this is what he says you know it talks about if you look at verse 9 it talks about what eyes have not seen what ear has not heard so he's talking about our natural physical senses right hearing seeing natural physical senses now what is not available or what is not um, is there some phone ringing or so UPS no? outside okay fine so what is not possible with our natural senses okay I seeing uh, or ear hearing we have not received the information yet okay so it says I has not seen ear has not heard it also talks about what has not entered into the heart of man okay so it has not come to our knowledge to we've not received revelation right it has not entered our heart so it says um, the things which God has prepared for those who love him okay so we say I, I, re I really don't know I, I don't know what God has in store for me right I don't know no, I'm not able to see I'm not able to understand and uh, you know I'm trying to put these things together and trying to you know uh, analyze um, I'm not able to understand, right? And nor have I got into my heart. There's no, nothing that I've received yet. But here it says that the Spirit of God, God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. Okay, because the Spirit of God is a Spirit of revelation, the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit reveals what we have physically or in our natural senses not able to analyze and understand. Okay, we're not able to understand. Okay, how will this work? How? What will happen? How can you know? How can I solve these things? All these, you know, we are not able to maybe think and analyze and understand, right? Um, but the Holy Spirit reveals, brings a revelation into our lives, into our hearts, right? So that's something beautiful, right? Because our understanding is finite, our knowledge is finite, which means it's limited, right? But the Holy Spirit, who is omniscient, who knows everything there is to know, and also the things that God has in store for us, what God has planned for us, His plans, His purposes for us, the Holy Spirit knows it. And it says here that He reveals them, God reveals them to us, through his spirit okay so there is this revelation that the holy spirit brings as we walk with him right walk with him meaning it's you know not approaching god only when when we come to those crossroads but continuing to walk with him continuing to journey with him you know those days our prayer life me and my brother was very very simple Okay, it will start the minute we get our exam timetable. Right? Whenever we get our exam timetable and this thing, that is, that is when we will actually pray. Or before the exams, that's when we pray. After that, just forget about God. Right? It's just a ritualistic thing. We were not believers, of course, but then 
this is how it was you know whenever there is a need whenever there is an emergency whenever they feel it oh i'm in trouble that is when we used to actually approach god right but here we have the privilege of approaching him we have the privilege of walking with him right every day you wake up god is already there he's with us through the night he is with us he's watching over us right so it's such a comforting fact that we have holy spirit who knows understands everything he's with us all the time okay he's with us all the time so we are never alone and sometimes you feel no i feel so alone actually that's that's not true because you know god is with us all the time whether we feel it or not feel it he is with us and that's the truth right he dwells in us so if we are if we have that assurance you know this spirit of revelation you know he will show he will teach right so we don't have to be afraid we don't have to panic we don't have to be in a state of anxiety right he will you know, the thing is for us to approach him for us to seek him and he gives us that faith and that confidence that he will lead us so the holy spirit when we see he's a spirit of revelation so that something that we understand about god's heart is that god is not someone who's hiding everything from us okay like he has i you know it's not like god is saying i know everything the plans for you and i'm not going to show you it's not that's not god and god wants to reveal god wants to show right god wants us to know so that we can and god wants us to prepare us for what he has in store for us you know that's our god right yes there is a certain amount of you know there is a timing that is involved and it's like you know if if i asked you to carry um, carry you know something okay carry this chair you'll carry it you carry the weight of it you're strong enough right if i say okay someone okay, can you carry this speaker yeah you'll carry it so i put two speakers on your back and say you know can you carry it you know some people might struggle some some may be able to right so the thing is what there's a we need to have strength to carry we need to have strength to even carry the plans the purposes that god has for us okay, you know so god does it at a time when when it's appropriate when we receive strength right otherwise we'll be just wait you know god how will i do it Right. God, as we increase in strength, right, God, there's a progressive revelation of what He wants us to do, right? Um, and the challenges that that uh, you know He wants, the mountains that He wants us to move, right? So, the spirit of revelation and wisdom. Okay, so that is who He is, right? Yeah, Sanjay Emmanuel, God with us, right? So, um, so He gives us. understanding of the things that he's already prepared for us the other thing that we see is the, the uh, what we read just now this morning is a spirit of wisdom revelation okay uh, we're going to study uh, we're going to look at the gifts of the spirit so we see one of the ways uh, when we look at the gifts these are characteristics okay these are ways by which the holy spirit reveals himself the gifts of the spirit we see word of wisdom as one of the gifts a word of wisdom which means um wisdom the ability to use knowledge their ability to solve something um bring a solution to a problem right so he has the wisdom he is wisdom itself he is a spirit of wisdom right so he brings this to us okay um when we read we see that he brought revelation to the apostles and the or revelation or to the apostles and the prophets um let's look at um Ephesians three verse five. Okay, um, he who supplies, sorry, sorry, I'm in Galatians. Ephesians three and um, verse five says, um, maybe we can read by read from verse three. Ephesians three three. Okay, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already. by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in the other ages was not made known to the sons of men 
as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. Okay, So, so this revelation, what is this revelation? That God wants the Gentiles to be saved, non-Jewish people to be saved. You know, when we went through the book of Acts, we saw that there was a big, there was a big issue. What was the big problem? There was a big contention. Why? Because Peter went to that to Cornelius' house, who was not a Jewish man. Right? What did he do there? He went there. He preached the gospel. Right? And then we saw that uh, you know Acts chapter ten. Right? So we saw that the Holy Spirit filled those people. They began speaking in other tongues and magnifying God. Then he baptized them. Then they asked him to stay on. Then he stayed there, spent time with them. So it was not lawful for the Jews to fellowship with non-Jews in this manner. Okay, So it became a big issue. It became a big problem. Then Peter had to explain, hey, they received the Holy Spirit the same way we receive. Okay? So here, Paul is writing about that, the fact that this revelation was not actually available in those days, but now in these times it has been revealed. Who revealed it? You know, let's look at that. As you may understand, my knowledge of the mystery of things within the other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the you see that? Verse 5, right? By the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. Okay, so the Lord brought about that revelation in the fullness of time. Okay, so the Lord brings like the apostles and founding apostles and pro prophets, they laid down the whole doctrine of scripture and so on. So the Holy Spirit brought the revelation. And it's not a surprise because the Lord Jesus, when he was talking about the Holy Spirit, John chapter, I think 14, 15 and 16, he was talking about the Holy Spirit. He said, that the Holy Spirit will teach you, right? He will teach you and he will remind you of those things that I taught you. Right? The Holy Spirit is a teacher. He is also one who reminds us of the things that were taught by the Lord. So he brought that revelation, he brought that teaching uh, to the apostles and prophets. Okay, So we see the ministry of the Holy Spirit there. Okay. Um, so he teaches us the things of God, Hebrews 10, 14 to 16. Let's um, look at that verse before we move on. Hebrews chapter 10, verse, um, verses 14. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. Then he adds, then he adds um, the sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Okay. So verses 14 to 16 talks about um, how the Holy Spirit, he's saying the Holy Spirit witnesses to us for after, uh, after he had said before, and it quotes from the Old Testament scripture, right? Uh, I think it's from Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, right? So this is what the Holy Spirit does. He teaches us the things of God, okay? So we have him as our teacher, the Holy Spirit. He witnesses, he teaches, he also, you know, gives us that, uh, he testifies of Jesus, okay? So that's a great assurance. And this is all, uh, uh, this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit um, for a believer. Okay, any any questions here? Online students or any questions? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. The gospel. Well, the Jews believed because to them were given the law and the prophets, and um, you know. <laughs> No, till the, because till that time, they um, their understanding was this: that we are a special people, and which is all true, 
like to us was given the law the prophets um you know uh, and everything god has a plan for us as a as a nation and and all that right but this whole thing of righteousness apart from the law that's one secondly uh, that is through through the through jesus and the second second thing is that this righteousness which means being saved salvation everything is for the entire world right? even though the lord spoke about it their minds were not yet um the eyes were not opened yet the lord said you know john 3:16 when nicodemus uh, came he said um you know the god so loved the world so he's talking about you know a global uh, thing but for the jews it was still you know it's us we are the world kind of thing you know so for them uh, it was something and also according to the whole thing according to the jewish law not being able to you know not not supposed to fellowship with the, those who are non jews because they don't have the law and everything so it was quite radical in those times right uh, for for a jewish person um, to to actually you know change to actually open the, and, and that's what god brought about and that's therefore you know we see the book of romans was even more you know radical so paul says you know now apart from the law you know there is this righteousness uh, the righteousness that is by faith um, through grace you know romans chapter 8 and all that so um, yeah so that's why peter says you know when he's referring to paul and about this whole thing of grace and peter says you know people who are untaught they they do, they don't understand brother paul has written some things that are you know people that is there is a lot lot of things that people who are untaught they actually they don't understand and they actually twist it to their own you know to their own end so he's talking about that so yeah um so that's why Jewish person the whole thing of grace um salvation by apart from the law is something very very uh, yeah foreign for them yeah um yeah somebody put their hand up yes pastor it's me i have a question yeah uh this is the covenant that i will make with them after those days says the lord i will put my laws into their hearts is it yeah. for the millennium uh, reign or is it now um well when when we look at uh, that verse uh, hebrews for, hebrews um okay so he, hebrews 10 and verse 16 a 16 right, uh, 16, yeah, right. 16, 16 yeah so yeah so this is uh, something that he is actually you know he is doing it for the church today that he is in fact by the holy spirit that he is um, um uh, he is bringing that um you know that understanding to our hearts his law in our hearts and in our minds he is bringing that but it also has application for what is to come right so um because um is here he's talking about the about the law and specifically for a jewish audience right so it applies to the nation of israel as well yeah. okay pastor thank you okay. okay any other yeah 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 so gentiles definition anybody who's not a jew not a jew by birth by descent right yeah okay um what is interesting you know um where paul talks about circumcision because every jew is circumcised right and uh, which is a physical thing that they did as per the you know purification law or as per the jew sorry mosaic law um but Paul talks about circumcision and he says you know who's the one who circumcised who's actually circumcised in the heart that is of the spirit okay he's talking about how a gentile when receives Christ there is that you know that the circumcision for purity for cleanse whatever it's something that is a spiritual work No, no, no. It's it's not. So uh, Ephesians is very clear. 
that the Lord Jesus came to break down that wall, right? So um, Ephesians 2 and verse 14, he himself is our peace, was made both one. What is that? He's talking about Jew-Gentile kind of thing. And he has broke down, broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh, the enmity, the law of commandments, etc., that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Ephesians 2, verses 14 to you know, onwards. Right? So we have access by one spirit to the Father. So no denominations, no Jew-Gentile kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Um, sorry, that is after those days. Um, what was that? Um, yeah, Sanjay? Um, is it, are you, are you referring to Hebrews, the book of Hebrews 10? Yeah, okay, so so, th so there um, we see that, um, so this is uh, in Jeremiah, um, sorry, what is the reference? This is from the book of Jeremiah, right? Uh, the writer of Hebrews is quoting from there. Um, let me just get the exact verse. So it's, I think it's Jeremiah 31, okay, from there. So, so he's talking about, you know, after, uh, he's talking about a time period, which is uh, not then, but it's 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 yet to happen. So and therefore that uh, usage, you know, I will make them with them after those days. So it's talking about a time period which is not then, uh, at the time of writing um, of that scripture. Right? Yeah. Uh, hope that helps, Sanjay. Um, Okay. Any other thoughts? Any other questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we are going slightly. <laughs> we can. We can. We'll take it offline. But um, any questions about, um, you know, this about the work of the Holy Spirit, we can see uh, that will be. Sorry, sorry. Well, whether we'll have Jews and Gentiles, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. Correct. Um, so, you know, the thing is, uh, if I just answer. Without context, 21, 9, okay. 21? No, no, 9 no, it's right. Okay, and the glory of the Lord. So it talks about a new Jerusalem, a new city, um, and what will happen. It talks about the dimensions, etc. right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, so special place for? No, 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 no. No, it's for, see, we are... So when it, when it talks about Zion, the city of God, we are the new, we are, we are the Zion. We are the people of God, right? So in fact, when you read Psalms, you know, like talks about how God makes Zion his dwelling place and all that, it, it, it is actually applicable for us. So, okay, so your thing is, okay, will it be only for them or will it be for us also? It's for the, you know, for the believer, and, you know. So that's why Ephesians, you know, what we read says the, the whole thing is, no, there's nothing. There's no division. It's broken, right? And salvation, yes, the whole lineage, the whole revelation, and everything came from through the Jews. But it's now for it. It, it came from through the Jews, yes, definitely. Uh, but it's for the entire uh, world, right? Okay. Yeah. But having said that, you know there is a. I'm, I'm sure you know that there's. Uh, very in-depth study on Revelation on Daniel, okay, about the end times. So uh, the, the, you can always access those videos, uh, and of course, in the third, sixth semester, fifth or sixth semester is when you will, you know, study that, right? Okay, okay. Mm, let's look at um, what other aspects 
for the believer that the Holy Spirit brings. Okay? See, we see that um, in Romans chapter 8, we see that, uh, and also 1 Corinthians 14, that the Holy Spirit enables us to pray. Okay? Enables us to pray. Um, and we have this usage called pray in the Spirit. Okay? Um, first, let's look at Romans 8, 25. Okay. Romans 8. Okay. Romans 8, 25. It says, um, 26 rather, Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So verse 26, Romans 8, verse 26. Verse 27, now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Okay, So we have this wonderful ministry of the Holy Spirit enabling us to pray. Okay, Look at that, verse 26. He helps us in our weaknesses. Okay. So he's not going to make fun of our weakness. Oh, you do not know this, right? He's not going to ridicule our weaknesses, but he helps us in our weaknesses to overcome, obviously, overcome that weakness. Okay, so he helps, helps us in our weaknesses. What is it? The second part of it says, we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to pray. Okay, now has anyone been in that situation, right? Yeah, I think all of us in some place or the, I don't know what to pray. Right? Should I pray for A? Should I pray for B? You know, outcome. Should I pray for C? What What should I pray for? Right. So here it says here, we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to pray, but praise God, the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us. Okay. So the Holy Spirit knows what the will of God is. The Holy Spirit knows what is, you know, what is God's plan for person X. What is God's plan for this person, for this girl? What is God's plan? The Holy Spirit knows that. So it says the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. Okay. How? It says with groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay. Now that's a picture that we have um, you know, about praying in the Spirit right? or praying in tongues. Right, which groanings the Holy Spirit helps us Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, and the and the usage is this: um, the groanings which cannot be uttered into articulate speech. You know, there's so it, with groanings. So the Holy Spirit enables us. Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Now we don't know what we ought to pray. I have no clue. Right, what is the best option? pray in the Spirit, to pray in tongues. Because the Holy Spirit enables us to pray or He makes intercession for us because He knows what is God's perfect will for each one of us. Okay, So when we are feeling stuck, you know, maybe when, when we need help to overcome weaknesses, when we don't know what we should pray for about certain things, right? God, should I go there? Should I stay here? Or should I think things like you know maybe you're a, you know you're a working professional or you're a businessman should I buy should I sell should I sell now later you know all these questions right the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us okay so just remember that so He helps us He makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered into articulate speech, right? So with groanings which cannot be uttered, because he knows the mind of God. He knows what God's perfect will is. Okay. Now, if you turn to 1 Corinthians 14, okay, 1 Corinthians 14, um, and uh, verse, uh, verse 2, right? Verse 2, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Okay, so you know when we pray in the spirit, we don't understand it, unless there is interpretation. Of course, we don't understand, but we pray. Like we pray confidently, we pray faithfully. So what is happening there? 
we are speaking the mysteries meaning things that are hidden for us you know we are as we pray to god as we as we pray in the spirit we are actually speaking mysteries which means things that are hidden for us to find like the spirit of god is the spirit of revelation the things that are hidden he brings he reveals to our spirit right these mysteries the maybe the questions that we already always had the answers that we always wanted the understanding that we always wanted he makes it known to our spirit right even as we pray in the spirit right it's it's talking about praying in tongues okay then if you go to verse 14 it says for if i pray in a tongue okay my spirit prays but my understanding is unfruitful what is the conclusion then i will pray with the spirit i will also pray with the understanding i will sing with the spirit i will also sing with the understanding and then verse 16 he says otherwise if you bless with the spirit how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks since he does not understand what you say okay so he's talking about praying in the spirit uh, singing with the spirit um praying in with the understanding singing with the understanding so so he's contrasting like paul is contrasting between praying with the spirit or in the spirit praying with the understanding which means i pray in my own own language right the language that i know my mother tongue right i pray in that a language a known language so he's saying you know i will do both i will pray in the spirit i will sing in the spirit i will you know uh, i will also Uh, pray with the understanding, and I sing with the understanding. Right. So, um, just wanted to say we will we will again study when we study baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just want to say that this praying in the Spirit, um, when we see in these scriptures, we see it's referring to praying in tongues. Okay. Well, the Holy Spirit will lead us um, definitely, you know, to pray for things. Right. Suddenly, you might feel like okay, I need to pray for this. I need to pray for this nation. I need to pray for this family member. I need to pray for, you know, this friend. Okay, that is the prayer as led by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is giving that information. You need to pray, putting that burden in your heart. You need to pray for this. Right? The Holy Spirit does that. Right? But wherever, whenever we encounter this phrase, praying in the Spirit or praying with the Spirit, it's about praying in tongues because as we see the scripture it's very very clear right so that's the understanding that is there okay um let's look at a few more things um ephesians 2:18 okay ephesians 2:18 we have access to the father by the holy spirit okay through him which means through the holy spirit we have access by one spirit to the father okay what is access sorry permission to reach permission to go allow okay so some you know um, all our this laptop has a password lock so only when i use the password does it open up and gives me access right so like that i'm sure you know your email account you know you need to give your password and then it gives you access to go in right so when we when we look at um, you know the old testament we we see that when right from the time in the tabernacle not everybody had access to the father not everybody could go to the holy of holies right i'm sure in praise and worship you're studying about the the tabernacle right and how from the uh, you know from the outer courts you move to the holy place and then the most holy place or the holy of holies right so who could go to the holy of holies the high priest right only he could go and once a year right that was it how it was in the tabernacle right so but now we have been given access to go to the holy of holies which means we have access to the father by one spirit okay i think people living in those times would be able to appreciate this even more right when we get an understanding not everybody can you know it's, it's not possible you can't go people wouldn't have seen what it looks like on the inside right 
they can't go. Every time they had to, you know, it was always through the, the priest or sacrifice brought to the priest. The priest will do things on behalf of the people or, you know, go to God on behalf of the people and so on. But now we have access by one spirit to the Father. Right? There's no need for, yes, we have one mediator who is Jesus, right? between God and man. Um, if you look at uh, one more verse, that is um, Hebrews 4. Right? Hebrews 4, it says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So the way has been provided for us, made for us by the Holy Spirit. right? By the Holy Spirit, we have one access to the Father, all of us. So uh, Hebrews 4 and verse 15 says, come boldly. right? Come boldly. Because you know, once he's given us permission, and if you are still hesitating and saying, no, I'm not worthy, okay, then there's a problem, right? We are not accepting what he's done for us, right? Suppose I, you know, I give you permission, you know, uh, let's say I'm, I'm in one room and I just say, you know, you just come in. Just come in, now come sit, let's talk. And you still say, no, uh, no, no, it's okay, I'll just stand there. You know, I'm just standing outside the door. No, I'll sit there, I'll talk to you from there, right? So what does that mean? We think that is respect, but it's actually it's not, right? We think, you know, I'm actually giving great respect, great honor by standing outside, but actually it is not, right? We are actually disrespecting because he's saying, you know, I've made a way, I've made provision by the Holy Spirit to come, to come to fellowship, to I've given you access, but if we are not accepting that, that is disrespect, that is being you know, dishonor, bringing dishonor, right? So here it says, come boldly, since we have access by one spirit to the Father, saying, come boldly, okay? Okay, then um, we also, in Ephesians chapter 6, same book, Ephesians chapter 6, we see uh, prayer as referred to the sword, or uh, one of the weapons, sorry. Um, the sword is the word of God. We see um, a lot of weapons which are listed there for warfare, right? Um, what are some of them? The whole armor of God, shield of faith, right? Belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, helmet of salvation, all those things. So one of the things that we, we sometimes miss out is verse 18. Okay, so the listing goes on. Verse 17, the sword of God, sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And we think, okay, that's it. This is the whole armor. But actually, if you see verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Okay, so we see that is also something that is given to the believer, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Right. So, um, Sword of the Spirit and prayer, right? Prayer in the Spirit, right? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So, so what does that mean in the Spirit? So, yeah, so like we, like we saw in 1 Corinthians 14, verses 14 and 16, we saw that Paul is referring to, you know, the usage is with the Spirit. Okay. So in the Greek, the words with the Spirit, in the Spirit, they are the same. Just like how we see baptize with the Holy Spirit, baptize in the Holy Spirit, baptize of the Holy Spirit, it's one and the same. It's used uh, like interchangeably, right? So we say here, like Paul is saying, you know, pray in the Spirit. Right? This is one of the things that we have been given for warfare, that we can pray in the Spirit. Right? The Holy Spirit enables us to pray, and we pray in tongues, pray in the Spirit, and that is a warfare. Right? And we also see all kinds of prayer being mentioned there. Right? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Okay? So the Holy Spirit enables us, leads us. So we see this whole aspect of prayer 
um, you know, is also something that can be led by the Spirit and which can be in the Spirit. Okay, because he knows the will of God, especially when it comes to things that we are struggling. Like we don't know what we should pray for, how we should pray for. Pray in the spirit. Right? Pray in the spirit with the, you know, with the comfort that he knows. Right? With the comfort that he knows the mind of God. He knows the will of God. Right? And he's making intercession. That is one way by which you know, we pray and the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. Okay? Okay. Um, and there are several other areas of our Christian life. Okay. Worship. There is hope that the Holy Spirit brings in. And uh, we are placed in the body, spiritual body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. And all this is by the Holy Spirit. Okay. So we, we, when, we, when we study all these things, we see that, wow, there's so much that the Spirit of God has already accomplished in, in me. Right through the new birth, or he's he's just waiting to accomplish in me. Okay, he's waiting to do this in me. Um, like for example, John chapter four, verse 23, 24. Okay, that I think all of us know that scripture, right? He's having the Lord Jesus having conversation with the woman at the well, and he's teaching. The the woman asked, you know, how you you people say you Jews say that he should be worshipped only here and in this certain place, and the Lord Jesus says. The hour is coming when the when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Okay, for of such is the Father seeking. For such worshippers, the Father is speaking. So, when we look at that that phrase of worshiping in the spirit, which means that you worship out of your spirit, it's not something that is you know external to internal, but it's internal to an external expression, right? So that is something that we see. And it's also something that is led by the Spirit. Why? Because he says, worship in spirit and truth. Right? So the, when it is truth, it is as prescribed in the Word of God. And, it is, and the Spirit of Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth. Okay? So which means, as led by the Spirit. So we see worship. And um, he brings in so much of hope into our lives. He places us when we are born again. You know, this is another you know, truth. He places us in the body, spiritual body of Christ. Okay? So we are all placed, baptized in the body of Christ. Okay? And that is also something that, uh, that is brought, by the, brought about by the Holy Spirit. So... Uh, let me just pick a few things. First Peter one and chapter twenty-two. Sorry, chapter one and verse twenty-two. First Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-two says, "You have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren. Love one another fervently with a pure heart." Okay. okay several things we can learn here again from this verse. You have purified your soul. It's talking about our mind, our imaginations, our thoughts. How does that purity come? It says by obeying the truth. Whenever we obey the truth, there is this cleansing, there is this washing, there is this purifying that is happening in our thoughts, in our minds. Okay. So he says that, that you have obeyed the truth through the Holy Spirit. Okay. So which means by the help of the Holy Spirit, again, being led by the Holy Spirit, being empowered by the Holy Spirit, you have obeyed the truth. And therefore, that has resulted in purifying of our, your thoughts, your imaginations, and everything. Right. So he helps us to obey the truth. Um, in the same, uh, same book, we go to chapter 4 and uh, verse 14. Okay, chapter 4, verse 14. Um, it says, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. So he's saying, you know, when you go through persecution, you know, don't fear, um, you know, the spirit of God is with you. Okay? He's, he's empowering you to actually endure that persecution. He says, the spirit of glory, glory rests upon you. Uh, and uh, he said, blessed are you when you go through reproaches, meaning... You know, people insulting, 
people ridiculing for the sake of your faith right in Christ okay so um so all these things right we see that the holy spirit helps us um as believers so see the other exciting thing you know which which needs to be a part a big part of our life is that we are led by the spirit of god okay as believers we are led by the spirit of god um so why do we need the leading of the holy spirit right we for all the things that we we saw you know to lead us in sanctification in holiness in purity to uh, to lead us into all the things that christ has god has prepared for us right to give us knowledge of those things to lead us into it you know one of the things that we as believers when you come to christ is okay we realize okay i want to know what god's plan is for my life i want to know what god has for me and if you know if we are serious about you know being a disciple we want to say okay god i want to serve you yeah um is it shani yes um yeah shani can you explain in terms of um, other dimensions of christian life the last one despising the holy spirit oh sorry sorry come again tell me the last part can you um as under other other dimensions of christian life the last point despising the holy spirit can you explain that please okay okay so um yeah just like how we blaspheme the holy spirit you know um okay hebrews 6 right um and also hebrews 10 yeah so okay let's just back up let's go to hebrews 6 and um verses 4 and 5 um it talks about how uh, we can become partakers of the holy spirit um it says it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the holy spirit and have tasted the good word of god and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them right so what do they do they are actually crucifying for themselves uh, the son of god etc so um he's saying okay that you have tasted the heavenly gift you know which means that you have been become a partaker of the holy spirit you have enjoyed the fellowship of the holy spirit you received maybe uh, the gifts of the holy spirit and you're walking in it from that point from that place of close fellowship if one falls away okay and that is what we see in acts chapter 10 okay if you go to acts 10 um and um, um that scripture there um verse 29 this is what is this the reality is this a believer has all the riches that is available through the work of the holy spirit has the fellowship of the holy spirit the, the communion of the holy spirit and enjoys what the holy spirit brings into our into one's life as a believer but verse 29 if the person falls away how uh, so he counts unworthy he thought worthy who has trampled the son of god underfoot counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace so basically this person has reject, rejected jesus rejected everything that the lord has brought into their lives all that we have access to by the holy spirit this person has closed and rejected that so the writer of hebrews is saying how much worse punishment will such a person be considered worthy right uh, because they have tasted they have experienced they have become divine partakers partakers of the divine nature the promises everything and they have chosen to reject willingly reject and and fall away so yeah so that is that is what um um, you know, so that the believer is capable of despising the Holy Spirit, rejecting everything that the Spirit of God has brought into their lives. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Uh, you made a comment there about praying in tongues. Okay, that was in response to um, praying in the Spirit. Right. Thank you. Okay. So um, let's. Um, Okay, probably we'll continue next class. We're going to look at you know being led by the Spirit. We have this privilege to be led by the Spirit, but also we need to learn to be led by the Spirit. Okay, so learn to discern the leading of the Holy Spirit. Why? The reason is, by nature, we are so prone 
I mean, in the sense, we are so sensitive to the physical more than the spiritual, right? Because of a fall, yes, now we are born again, we are redeemed, we are open to the, you know, to the leading of the Holy Spirit, but we are so prone or so sensitive to being led by our senses, what we see, what we hear, nothing wrong, that's how God created us, but we have something even greater, higher than that, which is to be led by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's something for us to learn, understand, and uh, and walk in. Okay, so we look at it um, in in next class. Right. Thank you so much. God bless you.